everyone, and good afternoon. Uh, this is Drake Barakas, Chair of the National Hellenic Society. It's our pleasure to have you join us once again for our weekly NHS talk series. We've got a uh, very important uh, panel this week uh, that is addressing two major health issues that have affected Greece, but in a more of a positive light, as we've seen some tremendous success uh, on two fronts. Uh, first and foremost, uh, over the past decade, the uh, investment and performance of Greece as a country that was uh, near the bottom end of uh, smoking in, uh, in Europe and even in the world. And we've seen tremendous progress and improvement um, over that time frame. And secondly, with uh, Greece's response to COVID and, and the crisis that the, the entire world is facing, Greece being probably the most successful uh, uh, case study out there today, and uh, fingers crossed that things will continue. So some great uh, news uh, to come out of Greece on both those fronts. We'll, we'll talk exclusively about that. And it, again, it's my pleasure to uh, once again have our wonderful host, John Metaxas, lead us in our discussion. So I will turn it over to John, and he will take it from there. Thank you. And thank you so much, uh, Drake. And uh, as you just said, we have two focuses today, medicine and Greece, and more specifically, um, Greece's response uh, to the coronavirus and its anti-smoking campaign. And as I think we're going to find out today, there is a relation between uh, those two medical issues. Uh, they're, not, they're not separate issues. We have a stellar panel today, and uh, we're very happy to be joined uh, live from Athens right now by Dr. Panagiotis Bechrakis, the director of the Institute of Public Health at the American College of Greece. And we also will be uh, uh, joined shortly by Dr. Vasilios Kikilias, who is the health minister of Greece. And uh, we have a very uh, uh, special appearance as well from the U.S. ambassador to Greece, uh, Jeffrey Pyatt, who spoke with us earlier and will present his remarks on videotape. But uh, let's get right to the conversation if we can. And uh, as we always do uh, here at NHS, we like to let your questions uh, drive uh, some of the um, discussion. So we do have a chat function at the bottom of the screen that you might see and a Q&A function. So if you want to uh, submit your questions to our guests today, uh, feel free to do that uh, on those two functions, and I'll read them and, and relay them into the conversation. So uh, let's get started. And uh, Dr. Berakis, uh, thank you so much for joining us today from Athens. I know it's a late evening there, but uh, we appreciate your uh, joining us. Let me quickly uh, uh, tell uh, our audience a little bit more about you. Dr. Berakis is a pulmonologist and leading public health expert in respiratory physiology and tobacco control. He's the director and founder of the Institute of Public Health at the American College of Greece and director of the George D. Berakis Research Lab of the Hellenic Cancer Society. And he's also a principal researcher at the Biomedical Research Foundation of Athens Academy. He has served as professor at the University of Athens Medical School, Harvard, and received awards, especially for his work with successful anti-smoking campaigns in Greece and Europe, uh, given the special focus on youth and smoking. And uh, we start with uh, opening statements uh, from each of our guests. Uh, Dr. Berakis, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for inviting me to participate in uh, such an uh, interesting and uh, high-level uh, discussion on uh, COVID and uh, smoking in our country, in Greece. Uh, I thank you, uh, Mr. Sass, for your kind introduction. Thank you, uh, Drake, for organizing the whole event and uh, for giving me the opportunity to communicate with the big, strong uh, family of our compatriots uh, living and acting in the mostly most friendly to Greece country, the United States of America. But allow me to go directly to my first slide of uh, the presentation of today. Uh, not this, the second one. Uh, yeah. Uh, you can see the, some figures related with the cases and deaths uh, related to COVID-19 as per today 
in global level. We have 5.7 million of uh, cases and we have less than half a million of deaths in seven months. Uh, the figures show very high, but uh, if they are compared with another epidemic, the tobacco dose epidemic, you will see how little these figures are. In smoking, we have one billion cases currently all over the world, and we are losing more than eight million people every year. And another point uh, between the two uh, epidemics is that uh, for smoking, we know what we have to do. We have an available management and treatment, which is prevention and cessation. In COVID, we don't know how to treat our patients because the medication and the vaccine as are both under research. Next slide. Uh, the relationship of uh, smoking and the SARS-CoV-2 uh, is that uh, smoking increases the hand-to-mouth contact by 200 times daily. Because every time a smoker brings a cigarette to his mouth, to his lips, he is violating the instruction of the WHO saying that not to put our fingers close to our face and to our mouth. Uh, a second increasing uh, danger with uh, tobacco products use is that uh, the hands of the smoker contact with potentially infectious objects, the cigarette packet, the lighter, the ashtrays, the vaping devices, and uh, other things. It makes the use of face mask problematic because you cannot smoke uh, wearing a face mask. You have to remove it. And, uh, if this happens 20 times per day, it is a real problem. Uh, smoking impairs the respiratory system defense mechanisms, and of course, it leads to frequent bronchial and lung infections. This is the case of influenza and the common cold virus, uh, as we know, on uh, uh, the everyday clinical practice. Uh, another relationship between uh, SARS-CoV and uh, smoking is that uh, the virus overcomes easily the impaired respiratory defense, and it adheres to the specific angiotensin converting enzyme receptors, ACE2 receptors. These are receptors uh, regulating the blood pressure of our body, and they are mostly located within our respiratory system. The ACE2 receptors uh, regulating system is hyper-regulated in smokers, thus it is facilitating the viral entrance in the lungs. And these are the results. Uh, in the publication, of a New England Journal of Medicine, uh, coming from uh, our colleagues uh, from China. Uh, it has been documented clearly that uh, both admissions and deaths are much higher in smokers compared to non-smokers. And these differences were found statistically very, very significant. And uh, I close the next slide. The, uh, my remarks on the relationship between COVID and smoking by uh, pointing out that uh, uh, in the smokers we have an increased uh, viral spreading from asymptomatic and prosymptomatic uh, subjects uh, because. If a smoker has the virus and he does not know it, he produces more viral uh, uh, load to his environment by chronic cough and expectoration, by environmental pollution uh, in his cigarette butts, in the ashtrays, by passive smoking. 
in the same subject uh, is a frequent smoker at home due to quarantine, and this leads to increased passive exposure of uh, the non-smokers and children in his family. Uh, but smoking is not only a problem related to COVID, it is a public health problem itself. This is how we have considered it in Greece during the last uh, 10 years at least. We put science in the middle of our plans to confront the tobacco epidemic in our country. And uh, through science, the elements of research, education, and communication were transformed into scientific activities for smoking cessation and smoking prevention. Because this is the only way to reduce smoking prevalence in the community. Uh, all of this has been done uh, through three consequently developed projects. Part one, which started with the uh, Harvard School of Public Health in 2009 till 2012, and uh, it was uh, organized in collaboration with the Greek Ministry of Health, the Greek Ministry of Education, and the Hellenic Cancer Society. We had HART II organized by the Biomedical Research Foundation of Athens Academy, and uh, it uh, took place from 2012 till 2015, and from 2015 till now, we have the Institute of Public Health in the, uh, at the American College of Greece. All this work has been funded by the Befratis Foundation of Boston, Massachusetts. And I have to mention here uh, the name of the big philanthropist, the great philanthropist, George Befratis, the father of, jo of Drake, Drake, uh, who has been the uh, man who inspired all this activity and who generously supported it. So that today we have a series of uh, activities uh, depicted here. We developed school-based interventions for students, student conferences, student competitions. We produced educational material, educational collaborators uh, were established in the global level, and international seminars were organized in a volume which is depicted in uh, the figures of the right part of the slide. We have more than 1,500 school interventions. We had more than 55,000 students attending them. We have almost half a million of students' notebooks distributed all over the country. We organized more than 2,000 seminars for healthcare professionals. Uh, we have organized 10 Panhellenic student conferences attended by more than 7,000 students. And we had more than 11,000 students participated in the student competitions for the back of the floor. This is a picture of the material we are using and of our philosophy how to approach uh, youth. Smoke-free graves, smoke-free schools, smoke-free hospitals. Uh, you can see to the left the blue uh, Matheno Namigapnizo uh, notebook, which is a very big success of our uh, campaign. On the other side, you can see the idea Jaina Cosmo Holish Capism, education for a smoke free world. Uh, you can see the uh, uh, postcards, the real uh, stamps we have produced, and all this is presented now just to give you an idea that we approach children with no fear uh, about diseases, with no fear about the uh, bad effects of smoking in 
their uh, health. But we are trying to make them to prefer the way of non-smoking as a more attractive, more healthy, uh, more related to the strength and the power of their youth. So this is the way we approach the children. And this is how we have good results. And uh, now I'm coming to the very, very good news uh, about the smoking prevalence in Greece, which was uh, the data were collected only two months ago, three months ago, in February. You can see here the impressive uh, number of daily smokers, which is only 17%. Uh, it was fantastic. It was unbelievably. We have only 11% of occasional smokers. These guys smoke less than seven cigarettes per week, and it is a target group of uh, special uh, activities we have to take care of for them. It is easy to make them uh, quit. We have a 33% of quitters, which is enormously high. And of course, we have a 37% of people who never smoke. This is the age distribution of uh, smoking, and uh, if you pay attention to the red part of the bars, you will see that in the old aging uh, people, over 65, the smokers, the daily smokers are very, very little, 12%, and over 75, the daily smokers do not exist. Of course, some of them died uh, before. Uh, but you can see also at the other end, uh, in the uh, young uh, subjects, we have also very low smoking prevalence. This means that both prevention and cessation are working effectively in the country. Uh, talking about youth, I have to refer to the work of uh, Professor Anna Kochevi. Uh, who is working together, collaboration with WHO, and she's collecting patients from smoking prevalence among uh, teenagers between 15 and 16 years old. By every way they uh, evaluated their smoking uh, uh, prevalence. If they smoke, more than one cigarette in their life, it is reducing. If they were asked about smoking for more than one cigarette in the last three months, a very high level of reduction. And if they are smoking more than one cigarette per day, we have also a declining trend of figures. This is confirmed also by the Hellenic Statistics Society Authority, uh, showing here the results in the inner cycle of uh, smoking prevalence in youth at the year 2009. In the outer cycle, we have the same results from, uh, in, for the year 2014. We have a 33.3% decline in young smokers between 9 and 14. This is a very optimistic observation and uh, shows that the future uh, will be much better. Next slide. All our observations in smoking prevalence are in, uh, uh, in accordance with the reduction of yearly cigarette consumption in the country from 2007 until 2017, we have an almost 60% reduction of the year cigarette consumption in our country. Uh, this is a very, very good news, showing that uh, Greece is not anymore a smoking country. Next. And this is. Uh, our last uh, product, it is the brochure 
uh, which was presented uh, in the uh, last uh, World Non Tobacco Day, the 31st of May. Uh, it uh, shows the denial of youth to accept the fact that their father or their older relatives. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Beckham. Thank you, Dr. Bechrakis. That is a uh, wonderful story uh, that you've told us about uh, uh, efforts made uh, in uh, in public policy and uh, advertising and in uh, and in uh, uh, medical efforts to uh, get the smoking uh, levels down. And I think uh, that's something that may be surprising to many people in this country to hear about that progress in Greece. And you so eloquently made the link between that and the coronavirus, uh, which also is a health success for Greece and that Greece had some of the lowest rates of the virus because of its very swift uh, medical response and uh, public health response. I, I have many questions for you, but uh, before we get to those questions, I'd like to maybe put all of this in a, in a wider perspective because uh, Greece's improvements in its, in its health policies are also yielding some uh, political results, some, uh, some uh, diplomatic results, some, uh, um, some perception results that are very positive uh, for the Greek nation. And we wanted to put that in perspective. We spoke earlier today uh, with the US ambassador to Greece, Jeffrey Pyatt, about this. And uh, we uh, recorded that conversation earlier. Let me introduce that now. We'll listen to that and then we'll come back and we'll follow up with some questions for you, Dr. Bedakis. The Honorable Jeffrey Pyatt uh, is a career member of the U.S. Foreign Service. He was sworn in as U.S. Ambassador to the Hellenic Republic in September 2016. Ambassador Pyatt also served as U.S. Ambassador to Ukraine. He received the State Department's prestigious Robert Frazier Memorial Award in recognition of his commitment to peace and alleviation of human suffering in eastern Ukraine. Previously, Ambassador Pyatt's posts included service as Principal Deputy Assistant Secretary of State in the Bureau of South and Central Asian Affairs, Deputy Chief Mission at the U.S. Mission to the International Organizations in Vienna, and at the U.S. Embassy in New Delhi, India, and the U.S. Consulate in Hong Kong, and the U.S. Consulate General Office in Pakistan. Ambassador Pyatt served on the staff of Deputy Secretary Strobe Talbot and at posts in Honduras. And he grew up in La Jolla, California, holds a master's degree in international relations from Yale and a BA in political science from the University of California, Irvine. He spoke with us earlier this morning from Athens. Uh, I want to say what a, what a pleasure it is to be with you and with the whole team from NHS. Um, NHS does fabulously important work um, in support of our people-to-people -people relationship. And I look forward to continuing to build that build on that in, in the years ahead. Um, it's also a real honor to be speaking, um, especially after Minister Kapilius. Um, you know, Vasilius got him started as a basketball player, um, as, but he's really been one of the MVPs in terms of Greece's response to this pandemic emergency. Um, it's been really inspiring to be representing the United States through this unprecedented and, and difficult couple of months but in some ways, the story thus far in Greece has been a good one. Um, the Greek government, led by Prime Minister Mitsotakis, um, moved early and aggressively uh, to respond to the pandemic, um, implemented a very severe lockdown, which people were not very happy about. Um, but as a result of that two months of sacrifice, um, Greece has now begun the process of reopening in earnest. Uh, Greece was very successful in keeping its numbers down, as I'm sure Minister Kakilius has talked about. Um, what was also really inspiring was to, for me to see how all Greek citizens pulled together, uh, because this was not just a government effort, it was a, it was a society effort. And I think one thing that especially a diaspora audience in the United States will appreciate, this has been a moment of national pride in Greece for a country that went through a very difficult decade in which Many decisions were dictated by the European Troika, in which the economy lost 25% of its, of its value. And all of a sudden, Greeks again have a reason to hold their head high. They, they went from being, in many ways, the black sheep of Europe because of their economic difficulties to being a real model of successful management of a complex governance challenge. 
I think to his credit, Prime Minister Mitsotakis made an early decision to put the scientists out front. So it was Dr. Shodras every night who was on television reminding Greeks of why they had to stay at home and what was happening with the progress of the pandemic. Um, this was not a political football in Greece the way it has been in, in some other countries. And that has worked to the society's benefit. And everything that the government has done um, from the beginning of this has been guided by scientific advice and by the epidemiology. Uh, last point I, I would make is just to emphasize how proud I was of the role that American companies played through the Greek response. American technology companies like Microsoft and Google and Cisco played an important role in helping the government to build the digital tools that they used to guide their response, to inform citizens, um, and to measure the effectiveness of their their, their health policy interventions. Um, and these same American technology companies have played an important role in what has been one of the, the unexpected silver linings of the pandemic, which has been the dramatic progress that Greece has made over the past three months in digital governance. This is a country that when I came here four years ago, was it pretty close to the bottom of European rankings for technology in governance and a lot of bureaucracy as anybody who's done business here can tell you um, they have now leapt forward in that area and minister of digital policy pedagogus assures me uh, that they're not done uh, they want to ride this momentum to really uh, go to the cutting edge in terms of using technology to make government more efficient more responsive to citizens and to help facilitate economic growth that's clearly the government's top priority now uh, the Prime Minister has begun to uh, encourage the reopening of the economy, especially the vital tourism sector. Uh, but they've made clear they want to do so in a way that's both safe for tourists, but also safe for Greek citizens. Um, they want to make sure that their strong record up until now is preserved going forward. So that's how it looks. As always, it's a huge honor to be American ambassador in Greece, and especially at a time when our relationship is moving forward so positively on so many different areas, from defense to business uh, to our technology and people-to-people -people ties. So thanks for having me with you, and look forward to a short conversation. Well, I want to get into a, a lot of those points that you just touched on, but let me begin. Uh, as a Philhellene, uh, you know the Greek people are known for their independence, and yet they bought into measures that really constricted them personally to try to fight this crisis. Why do you think the Greek people bought into what into this effort? It's a really good question. I, I think one aspect of it is the, the value the Greeks place on family. Um, and you know, this, this pandemic, just like in the United States, caused a lot of fear. But that fear was especially acute for households that had older people who were more vulnerable living with them. So Greeks tended to take this very seriously. And then the other, I think, is a consequence of the 10-year the, the economic crisis. The fact that Greece's health infrastructure had deteriorated, everybody understood that. So when they saw this disease coming at them from next door in Italy, everybody knew they needed to buckle in and treat this very seriously. And what has the response done uh, to the credibility of the Greek government on the international stage? So I think it's, it's brought great reputational benefits. As, as I noted, um, for a long time, the Greek headlines were all about economic crisis, was Greece leaving the Eurozone, banks collapsing, and then it was about the refugee emergency. Now all of a sudden you have CNN and the Washington Post and BBC and everybody else running stories about this amazing Greek success story and asking questions like the one you just asked me, how did they do it? So I think that's a really commendable change in the narrative and I know that the Prime Minister is committed to leveraging that reputational gain to the task of economic growth and recovery, um, and promising that the same efficiency that his team brought to fighting the pandemic, they will now bring to the task of uh, creating an environment that's more favorable to foreign and especially American investment. Now, you also mentioned uh, the many challenges that Greece faces right now on the geopolitical scene. Uh, the economics uh, of, of the country, also uh, issues uh, uh, with their neighbor Turkey, issues uh, of their uh, territorial integrity. 
uh, and, and of course the pandemic is, is not yet over. How is Greece equipped now, in your view, to deal with all of these in light of where we've come in the last year? So one of the things that works to Greece, Greece's advantage is the fact that the bilateral relationship is stronger than it's ever been. And that was stated repeatedly by President Trump, by Vice President Pence, Secretary Pompeo, Senator Menendez, Speaker Pelosi, all of the leaders that Prime Minister Mitsotakis heard from when he was in Washington in January. I think we were really lucky that we got the Prime Minister to Washington when we did, because you heard a very clear message there reaffirming the U.S. commitment to our alliance with Greece, the value that we place on this relationship. And then significantly, it was also the occasion to mark how Greece is doing more with the United States, especially in the defense and security area, where our forces at Suda Bay are busier than they have ever been, where we have new deployments of American helicopters in Stefanovicchio, American Air Force units in Larissa, American troops moving through Alexandropoli. So we are here, we will stand by our alliance relationship, and I can promise you that Washington is strongly committed to continuing to develop and deepen this relationship as we cultivate Greece, as we say, as a pillar of stability in a strategically dynamic and complicated region. Mr. Ambassador, there are so many issues you just touched on, and, and I would love to spend a whole hour speaking with you with, uh, about all of those, and perhaps we can set something up in the future to get more in-depth into all of those issues. But let me ask you now, I think a lot of Americans and Greek Americans are wondering what kind of experience they might have coming to Greece this summer. What is your message to anybody who's thinking of traveling, any American who's thinking of traveling to Greece at this time? So the Greek government has adopted this wonderful advertising campaign, the Greek summer is a state of mind. And it was funny to me watching the reaction because most Greeks looked at this and they said, what does this mean? And I looked at it and I said, I know exactly what it means because I've had three Greek summers and I'm looking forward to my report. You know, this is a, a wonderful country and it's a wonderful season. Uh, the government this summer is going to feel different because of the social distancing measures that will be in place. Uh, the government has made clear that they want to ensure that people continue to respect the most important measures that we all know from life in America. Wear a mask if you're in a crowded space, like on a ferry. Masks are required for people riding, riding on ferries or on aircraft. Um, keep your distance when you're out in public. The one epidemiological fact that seems to be pretty clearly established now is that the, the disease um, uh, is less likely to spread in open spaces where people are spread around. And the good news about Greek summer is that is, that is the essence of a, a Greek summer experience is sitting on a spectacular beach where you've got it half to your own, um, enjoying the, the wonderful water, the wonderful food, the wonderful people. So um, they're gonna be careful about this. And, and what I've said to Americans who are coming is, uh, it's important to, to be smart. And the, the disease uh, has not forgotten Greece. Um, and uh, so everybody has to be smart through this summer, but this is also, especially for Greek Americans, a moment where the government is hoping very much to salvage some of its tourism economy, which is so important to the overall economy, 25% of, of GDP roughly. And as the prime minister has been saying, uh, the pie this year for tourism is going to be smaller, but Greeks wants to take a larger share. And it's especially interested in more of the, the high-end quality tourism and less of the kind of mass tourism that you see you know, in some places in Crete and Rhodes um, that involves lots of people jammed into um, closed spaces, which isn't, isn't very wise in the current environment. Uh, let's try to wrap up now. Many people, or some people, are fearful about uh, some of the issues that Greece faces and, and, and perhaps that they might accelerate. But how optimistic are you at this point uh, about where Greece has come from in the last few years and where Greece is going and where Greek-American relations are going? So, John, you put your finger on it. Um, it's our, your perspective depends on when you started. And when I came to Greece four years ago, people were worried about Greece leaving the Eurozone, about the banking system collapsing, about Greece not complying with the obligations of the Troika. Nobody asks about those things anymore. Greek economic recovery should be relatively strong. 
um, as we get into 2020, and, and the U.S. government is committed to supporting that process. The U.S. government is at the highest level. Our bilateral relationship is stronger than it's ever been. I'm very optimistic we're going to continue to um, continue to invest in that. And regardless of what happens in our politics, one of the great benefits that I enjoy is the fact that today um, there is a strong bipartisan Republican and Democratic consensus behind the relationship that we're building here. Um, it's a complicated environment and a, and a difficult world, but I think the, the record of governance that Greece has demonstrated uh, and the record of continued reform that the Prime Minister has reaffirmed um, make me optimistic that Greece is going to come out of this about as well positioned as anybody. And my job is to make sure that we on the U.S. government side, the U.S. Embassy, um, the State Department, all of our colleagues in Washington, that we're focused on the opportunities here. We capitalize on those opportunities. And to continue to do what we've done over, so effectively over the past few years, which is to work along multiple um, lines of effort, our defense relationship, our investment relationship, our people-to-people -people ties, uh, the way in which we, we work together to synchronize our foreign policies in the wider region. Um, how we deal with challenges, whether it's the pandemic or the role that China is playing in the, in, in the international system. So it's a very exciting and positive time in the bilateral relationship. I'm really proud to lead our team out here, and I'm very bullish on the future. Mr. Ambassador, thank you so much for joining Back us. Live now, we've uh, just been listening to the U.S. Ambassador to Greece, uh, Jeffrey Pyatt, uh, describe uh, his views on uh, Greece's response to the coronavirus crisis and uh, to uh, and where uh, that uh, very effective response has put uh, Greece's standing in the world in some uh, places where it hasn't been in recent years. Uh, we have been uh, speaking uh, before that with Dr. Panayotis Berakis, Director of the Institute of Public Health at the American College of Greece. And uh, we got a, uh, a full uh, recap of uh, their efforts to uh, lessen uh, smoking in Greece and efforts uh, at, uh, at getting the uh, Greek people to buy into that health initiative. And we're very pleased right now uh, to see uh, Dr. Vasilios uh, Kikilias uh, join us uh, from, uh, the, uh, from Athens uh, on the phone, or on the uh, line, I should say. Uh, thank you so much uh, for uh, joining us, uh, Doctor and Minister. And uh, welcome to the program. Thank you very much for having me. And uh, I do apologize for the delay, but we won't be able to, to connect. It seems like technology sometimes is tricky on everybody. Well, we're so happy to have you, and uh, I, 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 I'm sorry to throw you right into the program, but we have heard those two presentations, and uh, let me just uh, read a little bit about your, uh, your background before we hear from you. Uh, the doctor was appointed as Greece's Minister of Health by Prime Minister Kyriakos Mitsotakis in July of last year. His public service career includes membership in Greece's parliament, service as Municipal Councillor of Athens, Ministry for Public Order and Citizen Protection, and as spokesman for the New Democracy Party. Dr. Kikilias is an orthopedic surgeon and received advanced medical degrees from Greece's National and Kapodistrian University, where he serves on the faculty. He served in Greece's Air Force as an orthopedic surgeon and was also a celebrated professional basketball player on the IAC and on Neonios basketball teams, as well as Greece's national team. Dr. Kikilias also served as the president of the Athens Youth and Sports Organization. And uh, uh, doctor, thank you so much for joining us. We're really eager to hear uh, your views on where uh, Greece's uh, public health efforts have gone. Well, first of all, uh, I'm, I'm sure uh, Dr. Panagiotis Beharak is a uh, good friend of mine and uh, uh, under his true scientific leadership uh, we were able to uh, actually convince uh, uh, the Greek people unite under a, a significant transformation of uh, our public health banning smoking uh, in public uh, uh, areas in, in uh, places where children are allowed to go and uh, you know we were one of the last countries unfortunately uh, not to be able to uh, conclude this uh, this reform, uh, we all know the severe uh, problems caused uh, uh, to the to 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 to, to everybody by uh, smoke and smoking, and it was a reform that nobody actually did believe that is doable. But for starters, uh, uh, Dr. Panagiotis Bechrakis, the Prime Minister of Greece, 
Kyriakos Mitsotakis, it was his personal vision. And uh, I had to uh, find a way to legislate and uh, to, to actually put it into action. Uh, well, bygone is bygone. That was before the pandemic. It was a huge effort from every Greek, smokers and non-smokers. It was a, a coalition of, of the future to help our children live a, a safer, more healthier life. And it succeeded. In, it's, it's, a, it's a sign that uh, when you find the right way to approach people and to explain how serious it is to, to, to protect public health and what, what are the dangers of smoking, they, they, they do abide, they do understand, and, and they unite in a, in a unique cause. But right after that, unfortunately, we had to deal with uh, with a pandemic, a, a huge crisis of public health, COVID-19. Uh, I need to remind everybody that uh, the last time we had that globally was 1918, uh, 1718 was the Hispanic flu. And uh, of course, uh, I think everybody was off guard. I feel that strong countries, rich countries with uh, very strong health systems weren't able to, uh, to make it through this climax of a very, very dangerous uh, uh, disease and uh, unfortunately the costs in human life were, 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 were devastating. What did we do here in Greece? We, we were monitoring uh, the problem in the heart of China uh, early January and uh, uh, it was my responsibility to be able to build on, on uh, predicting and organizing the country before the virus comes to, comes to us. So it was a, a trying to work together with uh, uh, big hospitals in Greece, with uh, emergency ERs, with ICUs, and build them within the crisis, with our national organization of public health, but basically trusting Greek scientists, organizing a team of uh, esteemed colleagues that could uh, advise the administration, the government, on what are the measures that we should take. And of course, it's credit to the Prime Minister, Kyriakos Mitsotakis, who was one of the few uh, European leaders that uh, accepted uh, uh, this uh, scientific uh, data and took measures early, early into the, into the public health crisis. So that, that led to uh, awareness and transparency to the Greek people who were unbelievable in dealing with uh, this crisis. Unfortunately, we had to lock down the country, but we did it early. And that uh, led to uh, nowadays, unfortunately, 188 uh, dead uh, Greeks, which is very unfortunate. I, I mourn for them and I'm deeply sorry. But this is one of the best uh, scores and results uh, on the planet and we were able to secure our uh, national health healthcare system to build to double our ICUs during the three months of the huge pressure we had to undertake uh, February March uh, April and uh, to be one of the countries that are uh, optimistic and trying to reopen and help our economy and our tourism of course with health protocols with uh, a lot of care and attention uh, with uh, testing, with uh, more scientific response and solidarity, of course, that we have shown to other countries and other countries have shown to us. And to make the long story short, finally, after many, many years of uh, austerity measures and of great difficulties for Greece, and let's, let's, let's be honest of uh, negative, uh, negative uh, uh, information and negative news from all over the world towards my country, it was very, very encouraging and, uh, and helpful and uh, inspiring to the Greek people that finally the whole world recognized our, our effort and uh, gave credit to us for, for, for what we did. We couldn't have done it without the help of our scientists. We couldn't have done it without the help of uh, our society. Our society uh, took trust on the Greek administration and all together we managed to cope with uh, the first round of COVID-19. All right, thank you uh, very much uh, for those uh, comments. Uh, what what a, a fascinating uh, story and uh, and an inspiring one as well. Uh, I'd like to uh, start with the questions, and I'd like to actually pose uh, to you uh, first, Dr. Berakis, uh, the same question in a, that I posed to the ambassador, maybe with a twist. We all know that the Greeks loved their cigarettes, uh, and yet. Uh, your data shows that cigarette smoking is down in Greece after your campaign. 
And uh, we all know that the Greek people are very independent, yet they lived with the restrictions that were imposed during the coronavirus uh, period. What has changed uh, in the Greek people, in your view, in recent months, years? Uh, yes, regarding uh, tobacco control, uh, we know what has happened. We know that our efforts, our 10 years' efforts of uh, targeting to change the mentality of our society on uh, smoking uh, became effective. We have the results of a long-term plan which was scientifically uh, constructed and executed. Uh, let me tell you more details about this. Uh, in the beginning, we put a group of uh, more than 10 scientists coming from uh, medicine, from education, from psychology, from uh, different uh, science, sciences. And uh, they were asked to study what has been happened all over the world regarding the intervention in school education. Uh, for tobacco control, for smoking control. So we collected the literature from all over the world. We studied it carefully, and we finally uh, make a plan, which were executed. We have, for 10 years, we have three centers all over the country, where every day, uh, a class, a school class, is visiting a center, where a special lecture is given to them. They are taking a special material and they are going home holding a notebook saying, I learned not to smoke. This has been done for 10 years on an everyday basis. We have done all the seminars I saw you in my slides before. And we changed the mentality of the professors, of the doctors, of the high level society of our community. So people started thinking scientifically. And I'll tell you just one word. What we did was that we put science in our effort. It is exactly what uh, Dr. Kikilias, Minister Kikilias did for uh, COVID. He put a group of scientists and he asked them to make a plan. And he, as a very good executor, and I have to say that uh, he very modestly referred to the implementation of the total ban law in Athens, but I have to say that this is the man who dared to enforce the law in Greece. Uh, and uh, I have to give him full credit in the occasion of today. He is the minister who has really connected his name with the history of enforcing the total ban law in Greece. Uh, everybody thought that it was unbelievable, it was impossible, but he did it. And he repeated the same plan with the COVID. He put a group of scientists and he simply executed his, uh, the scientific uh, instructions given to him by the scientists. This is the role of uh, a good politician, to ask, to collect information, and to transform it into political activity. This is what you did, Mr. Minister, you did, and I have to, <laughs> to make it clear in this discussion. So, and this is an example of solving all the problems in policy. We have to scientifically examine them, and the scientific results must be uh, put in political practice by ministers and by prime ministers. This is what Greece is doing today, and this is why Greece is becoming stronger and stronger day by day, as Ambassador Payer pointed out just before to uh, Minister Kikilias. What he said was, exactly that Greece is progressing rapidly. And uh, Minister Kikilias 
knows very well how this is happening. We have a good leadership by Kyriakos um, Mitsotakis and a group of uh, ministers like Italians uh, working hard and with target, with plan, and with measured results. This is very important in science. Numbers talk, not languages only. Well, thank you so much for tying that all together with us, uh, with that excellent answer. Uh, Doctor and Minister Kikilias, we're getting uh, several questions coming in, including this one uh, from uh, Dr. George Kotsarelis, who is the head of dermatology at the University of Pennsylvania. And he wants to know, uh, how will the, the status quo change on July 1st? A lot of Americans are wanting to know, uh, can they travel to Greece now? And uh, what is the health plan uh, going into this summer? Well, uh, many thanks to the question uh, from uh, my colleague. Uh, I guess diaspora in, uh, in the U.S. is playing a dominant part at the honor of visiting numerous cities and states like uh, Chicago, Illinois, uh, and uh, New York, D.C., and uh, see how, how they, well they're doing. We're very proud of them. I have to say that uh, it's not an easy exercise, not an easy crossword to be able to reopen. Because, as you very well understand, numerous countries are on a different, uh, uh, different state of the curve of the pandemic, which means that some of them had an early response, other, other, others had a more late response, and that's how, that has led to uh, more cases or less cases, and, and then there's a time difference. For example, China was much, much earlier in, in the, had, had to deal with the disease, and then that passed to, the, to Europe, and then it went to the US. So you do understand that we have uh, this, this scientific committee of ours with uh, uh, digital technology, trying to input the data and uh, be able to uh, work on a program which is gonna be uh, controlling the way we open, which means that on the June 1st, we reopen for our domestic tourism and some hotels on June 15, we reopened two of our biggest uh, airports in Athens and Thessaloniki. And on July 1st, we opened to many countries through many uh, airports that we have and many uh, gates, ships, uh, cars, and no northern borders, etc. We will be monitoring how things are going with the rest of the world. And accordingly, we will bring forward or push into the future the ability of a, of a certain country to have a direct flight to, to, to Greek, Greece and its Greek islands. We try to send more people from our NHS to the islands, build more testing capability, link them together in order to be able to work accordingly with the National Organization of Public Health and have a bigger possibility of being able to, to transport through plane or ship, or I'm talking about ambulance services, a, a, a potential COVID uh, patient who, who, which needs to be taken care of in a big hospital in Athens or Thessaloniki. So to our American friends, which I cherish and love and uh, hope to see them real soon, just a little bit of patience till we see the, the, the data and see how, how, it's going to possible, how it's going to be possible for us to, to reopen to the, to, to the, to the whole world. And, and of course, I do acknowledge it's not easy and I show and we show total solidarity to all the people, to all the NHS workers, doctors, nurses, uh, to, to, to all the public servants uh, uh, that, that are trying to help people, are, trying, are showing solidarity within the United States and all the world, and are trying to save lives. I think the, the motto and the real lesson nowadays is the value of human life. And us in Greece, 100% we've put uh, the, the value of human life, top priority, having second or third priority economy or whatever consequence uh, may, may occur. Thank you uh, for that answer. Um, Dr. Berakis, uh, how uh, confident are you about uh, treatments uh, for uh, COVID and, uh, and a possible uh, vaccine? And, uh, and uh, what effect uh, might heat have during the summer, if any? Well, uh... It is sure that uh, treatment uh, will come, it is sure that vaccine will come, but it is a matter of timing. Uh, 
can be optimistic by hoping that uh, it's a matter of a few months to have a good treatment. Recently, we had a very good news uh, just two or three days ago coming from uh, UK, according to which a uh, very well-known medicine, uh, dexamethasone, which is a kind of corticosteroid, uh, is effective not in killing the virus, but in reducing the symptoms caused by the virus and reducing the inflammation of the whole body uh, suffering from uh, uh, COVID disease. And uh, this uh, resulted in a better outcome up to the level of 30%, which is just a help, not a solution of the problem. We still do not have an effective medication against the viral infection. Until now, we do not have a, a safe vaccine for the disease, but we know that all big uh, pharmaceutical uh, companies are working hard on this. We know that all the big uh, research centers of the United States and of uh, Europe are working in uh, trying to produce the vaccine and the uh, medication effective for the treatment of the disease. But till now, uh, the only good news is the ones of cortisone, of dexamethasone, which is not effective in killing the virus, as it will be clear and repeated, but it reduces the symptoms and the uh, inflammation of the body caused by the virus. This is where we start. All right, thank you so much. Uh, Dr. Uh, Kikilias, let me uh, just follow up on the last question because I'm, I'm getting more questions, but uh, this one specifically says, can a Greek American travel to Greece tomorrow, for example? And, and so what, what is the difference at this point between how uh, American travelers and European travelers are being handled in, in Greece? There are not. I guess uh, there can be a transit uh, flight. But uh, what I want to uh, make uh, clear is that uh, our aim, our goal is to be able to open the whole world. Okay, this is our aim and this is our goal. And uh, of, of course, we do understand that although there, was, there were numerous efforts globally from the scientific community to, have, to be able to have rapid tests, rapid testing, that hasn't been able, able to be uh, delivered to, to, to the world yet. The World Health Organization and uh, FDA and uh, uh, the European Disease Crisis Center, they all say that uh, uh, for, for the diagnosis yet, we do not have rapid testing. That means that uh, you know, the whole world is depending on uh, PCR, on our, uh, our classical, uh, the classical testing, so that that makes the life a little bit more difficult for 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 everybody. And everybody understands that uh, there are health protocols and and the health uh, matters uh, most. And uh, but on the other hand, uh, we, we must you know tr try try and start step by step uh, reopening to 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 the world. So uh, if you uh, enter the site of our Minister of Foreign Affairs. We can find all the details and all the traveling guides uh, uh, needed. And uh, of course, uh, uh, Greek Republic uh, uh, will be able to renew everything weekly. We got our team of scientists and experts checking the data every day and uh, issuing a statement uh, to the press every week and through our webpage in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs giving uh, detailed information about travel through the world to, to, to Greece, and that applies for the United States uh, also. We do know that a big part of our tourism was based on the United States the, the previous years, and we do anticipate uh, to, to have American tourists and friends uh, here, uh, but we have to do it in a, in, in a, in a way that will be able to be supported scientifically and with uh, public health uh, protocols. And I think that everybody can understand that, correct? 
Thank you uh, very much for that answer. Yeah. Um, uh, before we wrap up, I have a quick question for you, Dr. Kikilias. One of our founding members of the National Hellenic Society is, was also a founding owner of the Milwaukee Bucks basketball team. And so the question that has just come in is, who is your favorite NBA team and who is your favorite NBA player? <laughs> well, uh, since I was a professional basketball player and actually with a double scholarship, for the University of uh, Miami, pre-med school and basketball scholarship. Uh, back in the days though, unfortunately, uh, Mr. Dax has, uh, I, I, I'm a very big fan of the NBA and the NCAA and uh, I watch closely everything. So I was a Laker fan and, and that, that, that unbelievable fast break and back and forward was, uh, was incredible. I know uh, Ambassador Pyle will be very, very happy for that since as his hometown. But uh, I have to say that this is an amazing success story. This should be a Hollywood script and film of, of, of the will and the power of the, of, of, uh, the human soul and how a kid can, can dream of becoming something incredible and, and realize his dreams. And I'm talking about Yanis Antetokounmpo. I want to remind the world that Yanis Antetokounmpo was a young kid uh, that immigrated to Greece that had a hard time in his childhood that, that the, w w was playing in an open uh, basketball court in Athens in, uh, uh, in, my, uh, in my area in, in Tritonas, uh, in Kolonos and Sepoya, and was working, being a kid, he worked to help his family. And he had a dream. He had a dream of becoming a professional basketball player. Not only that, he had a dream of becoming an NBA player. And uh, he, 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 he made his dream true uh, in an unbelievable story that, that led him from the open courts of, of, of Athens and poverty to the huge stadiums of the NBA and to uh, becoming an MVP and to uh, amazing the, the, the world. And that's, I think, I think that, that's a true spirit of sports. And I think also that that's a true spirit of the United States of America being a land of, of uh, opportunity. So a young kid, an immigrant uh, in, in Greece, a Greek, Yanis Antetokounmpo, can fly to the United States. People invest on him. He works hard, even though he's a huge talent. He never gives up. He always tries to improve himself. He's so determined that he, he, he keeps on working, inspiring the fans, inspiring the ownership of uh, Milwaukee Bucks, inspiring his teammates, making huge NBA legends of the past and the present, uh, acknowledge his, uh, his talent and his uh, uh, unbelievable skills, and he reaches in the, to the top of the world in, in sports. This is an amazing story. We were very, very proud of him and wish him health, first of all, to him and his family, and many, many quality years in, in, in the top league of the world. Well, thank you for those uh, comments, uh, uh, Dr. Kikilias, and we're all rooting uh, for him and we're all proud of him. And uh, another inspiring story, we've heard many inspiring stories in this one hour just today about uh, what's going on in Greece right now with their health efforts. And uh, we thank you both uh, for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. And uh, with that, I, I turn it over to uh, Drake Barakis. Thank you, John, and thank you everyone for joining us uh, this afternoon and uh, an evening in Greece. Um, you know, one thing that obviously healthcare across the entire world uh, is, a, is a concern for all citizens. And even in this country, we have different uh, issues we're dealing with. But think of the Greece, a country that just went through a devastating crisis uh, decade long. Uh, think about the, the public health damage and cost. We know the human tragedies and of the human uh, effects of smoking and resulting in diseases and, and not being able to do certain things later in life. But think of the, 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 the health care costs uh, in a country like Greece with centralized health care system um, if the smoking had not seceded and throw in the COVID crisis and, and the excellent job that uh, Greece had done, um, you know, that, that would have been a major uh, really affect on the hospitals. It really would have taxed them to a point of, of devastation. So thankfully they got through that. Um, and uh, you know, it, it's an important uh, note going forward in terms of how they run the country. 
Uh, I also want to thank, uh, obviously, Minister Kikilias and my dear cousin Daki for providing some great information today. Uh, for those of you that uh, are anxious to get to Greece but haven't booked anything yet or have not had a chance to uh, think about it yet, um, don't forget, uh, if you, anytime you want, you can go to our website, nationalhellenicsociety.org. Uh, we have multiple programs that we've sponsored uh, that can give you a taste of Greece. We're obviously a, a three-year sponsor of uh, Diane Kuchilis on PBS um, and her My Greek Table, which brings us to different parts of Greece and talks about the cuisine and the culture. We also, don't forget, we have uh, sponsored through National Geographic, the Greek Guide to Greatness, which are snippets of uh, various aspects of our Greek culture and heritage, democracy, athletics, sports, and so forth. So uh, you can always tune into those. And finally, for, we do have a program coming uh, in a month or so, uh, our Her annual Heritage America program in Washington, D.C., hosted by Mike and Andy Manitos. Uh, this year, the program will be virtual. It's open to any college age students uh, here in the States. Uh, go on our website, you can uh, check out the information if you really want to get learn more about civic life and political life in our nation's capital. Uh, we can, uh, you know, you can sign on and uh, fill out an application. So once again, thank you everyone. Uh, thank you, Panayoti. Thank you, thank you. Ilias. Thank you, Greg. Thank you, John. Καλή δύναμη, καλό καλοκαίρι. Καλή δύναμη. Επίσης.